We've previously worked with signed area for very specific shapes of curves. And we moved from very simple rectangular curves to ones with triangles and rectangles, trapezoids, even areas that were negative signed area, and had some success. The question now is, how do we find the signed area for an arbitrary curve? Something more like what we see here. And the simple answer is that we can't find an exact value for the area under the curve, at least not yet. That will be something that we will learn how to do eventually in calculus. But for now, our focus is how do we approximate the signed area under a given curve? And that's really what we're going to talk about here. Now, I invite you to think a little bit about how we might approximate the signed area under an arbitrary curve. And pause the video, and then we'll talk a little bit about our conclusion. Well, I hope you've given some thought to how to approximate the area under an arbitrary curve, the signed area. And when I've discussed this with students, they've come up with various answers. Some have suggested that it could be done by making a triangle. And let's bring some context into this. Suppose this were the curve whose signed area we wanted to find. Suppose you wanted to find the signed area from 0 to 4, then some students have suggested well, let's just make a triangle that goes from here to here and use that for our approximation of the area. Others have suggested that we could build little trapezoids one at a time to find the combined area of all the trapezoids. And others have suggested a rectangle where we carve out some sort of circle-like shape since this curve can somehow be approximated as a circle. And still others have suggested that we simply construct rectangles to find the signed area underneath the curve. Well, all of those are fine suggestions, but to begin with, we're going to go with simple rectangles that we construct to find the signed area underneath the curve. And we're going to make another simplifying assumption, namely we're going to start out by working with rectangles that all have the same width. So in this particular case, what I intend to do is to find the <clears throat> area of a series of four rectangles, each with width one, namely the area of the rectangle that goes from here to here, the rectangle from here to here, here to here, and so forth. And then add the areas of those four rectangles up to come up with our approximation. Well, even with the simplifying assumption of using rectangles and the simplifying assumption of making the rectangles each of the same width, there's still a question that remains, and that is, what height shall we use for the different rectangles that we're making. And to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the very left edge of each rectangle and find the height of the function at that edge. And here the function you can see we've chosen is y equals x squared. And then we'll make that height the height for the entire rectangle we'll add up the four rectangular areas. Okay, so we start off with, we go to the very left edge of this rectangle between 0 and 1, and that's at x equals 0, and the height of y equals x squared at x equals 0 is just 0. So in this first somewhat trivial case, we're just making a rectangle whose height itself is just 0. The area of that rectangle then is going to be the height times the width, 0 times 1, and that'll just give us 0. Our next rectangle, again, we're going to the leftmost part of the rectangle. 
between 1 and 2, and so that's x equals 1. So we make this rectangle here with a height of 1. It has a height of 1 times a width of 1. That gives us an area of 1. The next rectangle is the one between 2 and 3. We'll use the leftmost edge of that rectangle to determine the height. When x is 2, the height is 4. So we'll go with that. And so our next rectangle has an area of a height of 4 times a width of 1, total area of 4. And finally, our last rectangle, again, sticking to the convention of making the height of the entire rectangle the height that we have right at the leftmost edge. In this case, the leftmost edge is at 3. So our height is 9. And our area is 9 times 1 equals 9. So these are the areas of the four rectangles that we've constructed. And so our approximation is going to equal 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9, or approximate area of 14. <clears throat> Let me just say a couple of things here. First, I hope everyone has caught on to the fact that this graph uses a different scale on the x-axis versus the y-axis. So the parabola really is much more steep if I were graphing y equals x squared on a coordinate system where the x and y axis had the same units. But I wanted to stretch it out just so that we could have better looking diagram just to be absolutely clear as to what it was we were doing. Second, the name of this particular approximation is called a left Riemann sum. Left because we're using the leftmost edge of each successive rectangle to approximate the to determine the height for each rectangle. Riemann because Riemann was someone that in the late 1800s finally figured out all of the precise definitions and proofs that put calculus on a good footing and some just because we're adding up the rectangle. That's a left Riemann sum. It's an approximation for the signed area from 0 to 4 of y equals x squared. And if you remember, we also have notation for that, special calculus notation. That looks like this. So we're going to say that this signed area from 0 to 4 of the x squared function is approximately 14. At this point, we can sum up the things that we've covered. And I would encourage you to go over these three points here on the right-hand side, explaining them to someone, a study partner, um, a parent, a friend and to do that before we go on. Okay, I hope you took the time to pause the video and teach. Let me just try to sum up that there are many potential ways we could work to approximate the area under an arbitrary curb. But one approach is to use rectangles. And this is going to prove very useful down the road. These sums of rectangles have a special name. They're called Riemann sums. And we make some additional simplifications. Namely, we decide to make all the rectangles of the same width. We don't have to do that. And similarly, we decided to use the leftmost edge of each rectangle to decide what the height of that given rectangle was. And when you do those things, what you have is known as a left Riemann sum. <clears throat>